Hello, my name's Keith Rucker. Back out here in the shop today, uh, again working on building this new um, spindle for the Greenleaf Shaper that we've been working on here for the uh, last couple of videos, I guess. Uh, this is uh, actually a pretty neat little project that uh, I'm taking on for a friend of mine, uh, Carl John Shields, who lives up in uh, Rockford, Illinois. Uh, Carl has this uh, shaper. I think I've mentioned this before. He's got this one arbor, but he's needing one made that will take a, a three-quarter inch uh, shaft. Uh, so again, this is for a wood shaper. Uh, so there's basically cutters that go down on here that have different profiles, different molding profiles, whatever kind of profile that you put on a wood wood shaper for cutting wood uh, for cutting profiles so uh, and it fits on a green leaf shaper I don't remember the exact model uh, I've got that in an email uh, Carl was going to hopefully send me some pictures of the machine uh, that I can uh, put on on the video here and show you so if uh, if he's able to get those to me I'll try to incorporate those into the video hopefully those will show up and you can see the machine to maybe get a little bit better idea of what this goes on but uh, again it's for an, an old Greenlee shaper uh, most people recognize the Greenlee name uh, from electrical uh, components and stuff uh, Greenlee's a company that's been around for many years and is still in business today uh, but actually Greenlee uh, got started uh, in the woodworking business and uh, they're really their claim to fame was hollow chisel mortising, mortisers and the bits for hollow chisel mortisers. So a mortiser is basically a square hole that you cut in wood for a mortise and tenon joint. And if you ever look at the Greenlee logo, it's a diamond uh, with a circle in the middle and that's basically the cross section of a, um, of a hollow chisel mortiser. Uh, uh, the bit that would cut that, that, that square shape, of course they turn it to an on an angle for their logo, but uh, most people don't realize that the Greenlee actually got their roots uh, in woodworking machinery. The uh, company's very old, I don't remember exactly when it was started, but been around for many, many years, probably approaching 100 years, if not over 100 years already, uh, has uh, been around. And uh, they're also based in uh, Rockford, Illinois, uh, which is right near where Carl is from. So anyway, a little bit on that. Um, Again, uh, we've, you know, in the past couple of videos, the first thing we did was we made the uh, arbor that we'll mount on the lathe here uh, to turn this on. We also used it for testing. Uh, and then in the last video, uh, we did the uh, internal boring and internal threading uh, for here and, and milled in this hex slot that the wrench goes on to pull this off. Uh, the, the next step here is actually to turn the spindle. So this is, um, oh goodness, it's a little over two inches. I don't remember the exact dimension. Uh, but we're going to turn this down to three quarters of an inch and then we're going to put an acme thread on here where a nut will go down and hold those uh, cutters on this uh, this arbor on the spindle so um, anyway that's where we're at now and uh, we'll show you uh, how we're going to finish this job up so i've got you zoomed in here where you can see uh, this is the uh, the little uh, stub arbor that we made in the first video on the series and again, this is an exact copy of the uh, arbor that's on the machine that these spindles screw on. Uh, we were able to get the dimensions and some pictures of that <coughs> that uh, Carl sent me a while back. Uh, and um, we made this. Uh, we had to, of course, take it out of the lathe because we had to make the next, uh, do the internal threading. And we needed this to test it, to do the test fit, to make sure that everything was going to fit. And now I'm putting it back into the lathe again. So I've got it in my four jaw chuck. And I want to make sure this thing is running just as true as I can get it. So uh, I spent some time, I did this off camera, but we uh, got everything centered up on the forge jaw chuck. And I want to show you that yes, it is indeed uh, running true. So right now, you know, I may have about a quarter of a thousandth run out on there, but it's very close to running dead on. Uh, that's going to be well within uh, specs there. So that's on the, uh, the little part here. And again, if you remember on the internal bore, it threads down, but at the bottom there's, a, uh, there's a, uh, just a, a bore, and that bore fits very tightly, only a couple thousandths clearance uh, between this little uh, uh, step here so that it, when it screws on, it registers down there, and that will take a lot of the run out, out into, in the, the spindle itself. And then the bottom will actually seat on this bottom down here. So... In addition to checking the run out here, we also need to check the run out on this face uh, because both of those are going to be very important. So we've got this run out. We're going to turn the indicator around now and check the run out on the face. 
So we've moved the indicator around now. We've got it on the, the, the face here, the flat part, and uh, we're going to check that run out and show you again that uh, everything is running real good. So again, I got, you know, it's, it's somewhere between maybe a quarter and a half a thousandth on that face, uh, probably closer to a quarter of a thousandth there. Uh, you know, so we're, we're again, we're running very true uh, on both of these, these uh, checks here, the way we got this uh, on the lathe. So this is ready to go. The, the chuck is tight, and uh, we're ready to go ahead and mount our part on there uh, to actually turn the rest of this on. So we just come in here and thread this piece on. When it gets down to the bottom, you can feel it uh, get just a little bit tighter because it's, it's right on that shoulder in there, which is what we want, just a real snug fit. And uh, we've got that tight. So the, the chuck will be turning toward me, so this will be tightening the whole time, so I don't have to worry about this coming off. It will be tightening as I, as I work on here. In fact, it may be a little bit challenging to get off the, uh, just because it's going to tighten so much while we're turning it, but this is ready to go. Um, what I'm going to do next is we'll come in here, we'll drill a center uh, hole in the end uh, so we can turn this uh, between centers here, or not between centers, but using a center on the end to give us some extra rigidity. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and turn this down to three quarters of an inch. Face the end off of it. And put a center in it. To start turning this down. Uh, we're going to take her down to three quarter. Move a little on that. All right, we're at uh, 295 RPMs. Uh, feed rate is uh, 10.4 thousandths per revolution. And uh, that last cut was a 50 thousandths cut, 100 thousandths total. Uh, I think I'm going to do that again, and then we're going to start taking some bigger cuts. I'm trying to get my shoulder established down here. So that's again about a 50 thousandths cut for 100 thousandths total. I'm not real happy with how that chip's breaking on there. That's, uh, and I'm not dragging a chip on there. It's leaving a really nice finish. But uh, yeah, I'm trying out a new insert on here, and uh, I may have to go back to the inserts I was using. I will, I'm going to give this another try. Uh, see if we can get a chip, better chip breaking than that. I took a true 100 thousandths cut and uh, still not breaking quite like I would like, but actually got a lot better result taking a heavier cut with this um, insert. So um, I think we're going to keep on working that and uh, get that diameter on down. All right, so I'm taking again a full 100 thousandths cut. So it'll be 200 thousandths off the total diameter.
just a little under three hundred thousandths of where we need to be. So uh, I think about 150 on this one. Six, eight, ten, twelve. That'll be 140 thousandths total. So we got 150 thousandths to go. This thing has gotten really hot, so uh, I think what I'm going to do now is give this a chance to cool down before we finish this up, uh, just so we won't have that heat. As I've said before, if you get a lot of heat in a in a part like this, it's hard to get an accurate measurement because as it cools down, uh, the part will actually shrink, and uh, you'll end up being undersized from where you need to be. So. Uh, we're going to let this cool down before we uh, finish turning it. We got that cooled down now. Eh, it's a little warm, but I mean, it's, it's about at room temperature, just a little above room temperature. So we've got about 150 thousandths to go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a 100 thousandths cut, or excuse me, a 50 thousandths cut, 100 thousandths total. been measuring this with the calipers because I'm just making rough measurements but I'm getting down to the point now where I really want this to be right on three quarters so uh, I'm kind of coming in here with the calipers so right now I've got I'm 23 thousandths over there put down here Still 23,000, so a couple of tenths bigger down here. Let's see, that's uh, let's see, so that's 23.8. Three point nine. So actually, we're pretty close. But we got about twenty-three thousandths to go. So um, I'm going to take about half of that and just sneak up on this final dimension. So I dialed in twelve thousandths right there. Sixteen thousand over. All right, we're about a tenth over right there. Three tenths over right there, and it stays about like that the rest of the way out. So um, we'll just polish that a little bit, and I think we'll be ready to go. All right. Anytime I'm using emery cloth on the lathe, I like to put down some uh, protection just to make sure that uh, we're not getting any grit down in our ways.
is this some fine emery cloth? See, well, let's speed that up a little bit. in the short rows on uh, this project. Uh, we've got this all turned down to three quarter now, which is right where we want. Uh, what I want to do next is thread it uh, from here down to about where the blue mark is. Uh, this will give us a shaft here that we can uh, put the uh, shaper cutters on and give us plenty of shaft up here that with some bushings we can get it all tightened down. Now the threads on here are acne threads and I'm cutting 12 threads per inch is uh, what I got. So I'm using a little lay flat insert in here. Uh, I've got a 12 uh, pitch, acne pitch uh, insert in there. Of course the lay set on 12 threads per inch. I have already scratched off and come in here with my acne gauge and double check that. Everything's good to go. Now when doing acne threads, uh, the process is pretty much the same as doing a uh, regular 60 degree thread except changing the angle of the compound here. So as you know, uh, a regular uh, uh, thread is 60 degrees and we want to be half of that, actually so 30 degrees and actually just a little bit less than that, 29 and a half degrees is what I usually set the angle at on my compound because as with uh, 60 degree thread, and we always want to cut on that front leading edge of the, uh, the uh, tool. So. What I've done here is uh, the, the angle on an acne thread is uh, 29 degrees. Uh, so I've actually got my compound set to 14 degrees. So 14 and a half degrees, but again, just a little bit less. Uh, just like we did the 29 and a half degrees. I'm at 14 and a half degrees here. And uh, so we're ready to go. So we're going to do this just like we would 60 degree threading, except for the angle of the compound. So uh, everything's ready to go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, put these threads in here. And I'm going to zoom you out here so you can see uh, everything going on a little bit better. Everybody's seen threads chasing up close. I know I'm hearing from a lot of people they want to see all the action going on the dials. So uh, just to kind of show you I've got a zero set on my uh, cross slide here. So I'm always going to take this back to zero after every cut and then I'll pull it out when we get down here to the bottom. Uh, we'll come back over here, go back to zero, and my feed, my depth of cut, will actually be on the compound. So we'll feed this in a few thousandths at a time. Probably start out with a fairly heavy cut, and as we get deeper in, we're taking a wider and wider cut on that leading edge, and we'll have to take a lighter cut uh, with this as well. So again, we're ready to go. Uh, let's put a little bit of oil on this. I'm going to feed this in uh, about 10 thousandths to start with and wait on my uh, dial here to come around and away we go.
according to my gauge here uh, it looks right I don't have a nut to test this with but I'm gonna make a nut to fit it so uh, but according to my gauge here I'm, I'm right on the money uh, you, I did come in here on the end and just kind of turn down a little small stub that's just like on the original one over there it's just to get that nut started so you don't have a real sharp edge on that edge um, this is a uh, pretty much done as far as the threading and stuff goes. Uh, in fact, uh, it's, it's pretty much done all together. We're about ready to take this out, I believe, and uh, we'll call this job done here in just a minute. So there you go. Um, that's the spindle. We've got it finished. Uh, as you can see, it's a little bit shorter uh, than the original one, but that's really what we want because uh, with a three-quarter, we just don't have as much meat in there. You're not going to be using as big of a stack uh, with those smaller shaper cutters anyway. Uh, so that's good. So the, the spindle part, um, I'm going to call this done. Um, we still have to make the nut for this, though. So uh, uh, I'm pretty much out of time for today. Uh, so we'll probably come in in our next episode and uh, make the nut. And... Uh, do some internal threading. So we'll probably actually mill the, the hex out of a piece of round stop because uh, on the original nut there is a round flange at the bottom and then it goes to a uh, uh, hex for a wrench to go onto and then we'll go in there and uh, bore that out and uh, do the internal threading with the Acme thread. So there you go. Uh, until next time, thank you guys.